BART, or Bay Area Rapid Transit, has been regarded by many as a space age rapid transit system. Many know about the system itself, its many quirks, and similarities to an S-Bahn system, but they don't know about the rolling stock. In this video, we'll look at the BART system's rolling stock, its history, and future, as well as compare it to other rail cars found in America's rapid transit systems. Before we get into the video, I would like to thank FanRailer for allowing me to use his BART footage for the purpose of this video. Let's start with BART's original rail cars, the A and B series, and work our way up to the most recent. These cars were first constructed by Roar Industries, now United Technologies, between 1968 and 1975, and they are actually still in service to this date. Think of them as BART's R32 or R46. Roar Industries were the same manufacturers behind the 1000 series which formerly ran in the Washington Metro. Roar wasn't always a rail car manufacturing company though, with them formerly being involved in the creation of aero structures such as engine components. I guess this contributed to the space age appearance of the rolling stock. Anyway, the A cars feature a slanted front similar in comparison to New York's former R40 slant rolling stock. Both the New York's R40 and BART's A series were constructed with a slanted front to be more aerodynamic and to reach higher speeds at a quicker pace. The difference with the A series though is that they were meant only to be lead or trail cars, with the B series being in between unlike New York's R40, which were configured in married pairs and could always be found in the center of consists. The A series is for cab cars, whereas the B series is for trailer cars. The A series features a giant cab window, allowing for greater visibility for both the driver and passengers, as there is a clear window from the passenger compartment looking into the cab. Alstom built the C-Series, the following fleet, between 1987 and 1989. These cars are called the C1 cars. They do not have an aerodynamic front like the A-Series, which allows them to be used in the middle of a consist. This also allows for faster and easier coupling procedures without requiring the train being in a switching yard. In the mid-1990s, another order for C-Series trains were placed with Morrison Cutson building the extra units. These cars were named the C2 and are very similar to the C1 cars. Both car types originally had carpeted floors, however, due to concerns regarding cleanliness, the carpeting in all cars have been removed. Talking about things being removed and replaced, throughout the 2000s, the rail cars underwent extensive refurbishments and had things like their HVAC and traction motors replaced. During the 2010s, BART began the process of replacing its aging railcar fleet. Many of the trains in revenue service were over 40 years old and were clearly nearing the end of their revenue service life. BART awarded Bombardier Transportation, now Alstom, a roughly $1 billion contract in May 2012 to build approximately 400 new railcars for the system. BART bought over 300 more cars a year later for a total fleet of 775 new cars. After the first few of these new rail cars were delivered in 2018, BART began the process of decommissioning its aging fleet, starting with the C2 cars. Despite their youth, they had numerous problems, including defective HVAC units, windshield wipers, and even doors that frequently came off their tracks. I guess ordering additional rail cars from a different company wasn't such a smart idea. The replacement fleet, named the D and E series, or Fleet of the Future, have many modern amenities, like bike racks, digital passenger information screens, automated announcements, and more. In contrast to previous BART rail cars, which only had two doors per side, 
These trains feature three per side. The extra door helps reduce dwell times, speeding up service. Unfortunately, delays have plagued the delivery of these new modern railcars, which is a frequent occurrence with Bombardier. All railcars were supposed to be delivered and in service by this year, but only 308 of 775 new cars have been delivered as of February 2022, with just 219 in service. Now, the A through E cars aren't the only railcars run by BART. There's actually two more. First, we have the AGT fleet. This fleet operates on the Oakland International Airport line, which is essentially a people mover that connects the mainline BART Network's Coliseum station to the Oakland International Airport. The trains initially started running in 2014, and there are just four in operation. It runs automated because it is essentially a glorified air train. What doesn't run automated though is BART's other revenue service train, Statler GTWs, an off-the-shelf diesel multiple unit train can be found on a spur line from the Pittsburgh Bay Point Station to the Antioch Station. There's not much I can say about these trains except that they have a sleek appearance and makes me wish to see some Statler rolling stock in New York. Now obviously, BART runs other types of trains, like work trains, but those aren't as interesting as the ones used in passenger service, so we won't be talking about those today. BART's rolling stock is really interesting, and it reminds me a lot of the R44 and R46 in New York. Those two fleets were originally built to commuter rail specifications, and you can still see the remnants of that to this day, with the transverse seating, 75-foot cars, and their speed. Many American subway cars built in the 1970s appear to have been designed to commuter rail specifications rather than typical subway standards, with smaller cars and more doors. Despite this, I think some of the features found on cars built during this time is better, like transverse seating, which is a treat during longer trips. Although, it is nice to see systems known for their large rail cars like the Washington Metro, MARTA, and BART start to order more traditional subway stock. While the rail cars may still have an abnormal size, some will have open gangways, more passenger information screens, and a reconfigured interior to allow for more capacity. Let's hope these transit systems continue to move in the right direction in the future, as that is the only way they'll be able to remove people from their cars and get them on public transportation. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of this type of content in the future, like, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member. Also, in the comment section, tell me if you would like to see more videos on BART.